Object-oriented programming could be what is holding you back from being a great Python developer and as well as landing your first job as a software engineer. Welcome everyone to Python Object-oriented Programming course. Now, if you struggle to understand the concepts of object-oriented programming in the past, then you are totally fine and you are in good hands because in this course, I'm going to make sure that this will be the last tutorial that you will ever watch about classes and the complex concepts that comes with object-oriented programming. And we are going to do this by developing a real Python application that is going to be very cool to write and we will add to its complexity step by step and throughout the way we will understand everything that we need to know about object-oriented programming. Now there are going to be some requirements to this course. I do expect from everybody to know at least about functions, variables, if statements and as well as for loops. And if you know those things from other programming languages, then this is also fine. So with that being said, let's get started. Now to explain why you should write object-oriented programs, I will explain the concepts based on a store management system that we will start developing together. So starting to think about how to take our first steps with such a program, we could first think about tracking after the items that we have right now in our store. So one way we could get started, we could create those four variables to start tracking after our items. So as you can see, we have our first variable item1 equals to phone, and then we have three more variables that are intentionally starting with the prefix of item1 so that we could describe that those four variables are related to each other by following the correct naming conventions. Now, you might think that those four variables are related to each other only because it uses the same prefix of item1. For Python, those are just four variables with different data types. So if we were to print the type for each of those four variables now, we would receive their types with no surprises, right? We would receive string and integer for price quantity and price total. Now, I want to focus on those specific outputs right now because as you can see, for each of the types, we also see the keyword of class. Now, this means that those data types are actually instances of strings or integers. So in Python programming language, each data type is an object that has been instantiated earlier by some class. And for the item one variable, that has been instantiated from a string type of class. And for the price quantity and price total, those have been instantiated from a class that is named int, meaning integer. So it could have been nicer if we could tell Python that we want to create a data type of our own. It will allow us to write a code that we can reuse in the future easily if needed. Now, each instance could have attributes to describe related information about it. And we can think about at least some good candidates for attributes we could have for our item data type like its name, price, or quantity. All right, so let's go ahead and start creating our first class. So I will clean everything from here and we'll go ahead with it. So it is going to be divided into two parts. The first one will be the creation of the class and the second one will be the part that I will instantiate some objects of this class. Now, when I say creating an instance or creating an object, basically I mean to the same thing. So you might hear me saying one of those. All right, so let's go ahead and say class, and then this needs to be followed by the name of the class that you want to create. So we would like to give it the name of item. And then inside of this class, in the future, we are going to write some code that will be very beneficial and very useful for us. So we won't repeat ourselves every time that we like to take similar actions. But for now, temporarily, I'm going to say here pass, so we will not receive any errors inside this class definition. All right, so now that we have created our class, then we are allowed to create some instances of this class. So let's go ahead and say item one is equal to item. And that action is equivalent to creating an instance of a class. Just like if you were to create a random string, then you will say something like the following. This is equivalent to this one as well. So it is very important to understand how classes are working in Python. So I will delete this line because this was just for an example. 
And now I said that we are allowed to assign some attributes to instances of a class. So let's go ahead and start creating attributes. And that will be achievable by using the dot sign right after the instance of a class. And here you can say that you want to give it an attribute like a name that will be equal to phone and item one dot price could be equal to 100 and item one dot quantity could be equal to five, for example. Now in that stage, you might ask yourself, what is the difference between the random variables that we have created to those four lines? Well, here we actually have a relationship between those four lines because each one of the attributes are assigned to one instance of the class. And I could prove you this by going ahead and try to print the types of item one now and as well as the types of the attributes of name, price, and quantity. Now with name, price, and quantity, we are not going to have any surprises because we assigned string type attributes to the item object. But if we were to print that, then check out the result if I was to run this program. So you can see that now we have a data type of item here and that is the big difference between what we have seen previously to this thing that we have just created. So now we understand how we can create our own data types. Now let's go ahead and see what are the rest of the benefits using object-oriented programming. Okay, so until now we understood how to assign attributes to instances. We should also understand now how we can create some methods and execute them on our instances. Now, if we will take as an example the built-in class of string, then you know that we have some methods that we can go ahead and execute for each of our strings. And for this example, you can see that I grab an instance of a string that I named random str, and then I go ahead in the next line and execute the upper method, which if you remember is responsible to grab all the letters and turn them to uppercase. Now, the biggest question here is how we can go ahead and design some methods that are going to be allowed to execute on our instances. Well, the answer is inside our class. So we could go inside our class and write some methods that will be accessible from our instances. So we could go ahead and say def and give our method a name. Now, a good candidate for a method that we'd like to create now is actually calculate total price. Because as we understand, it could have been nice if we were to have a method that will go ahead and calculate the result multiplying item one dot price with item one dot quantity. So we can get the total price for that specific item. Now, before we go ahead and complete this function, then I'm going to just create one more instance of this item by also deleting those two lines because we understood the example. So I'm just going to change those to item two like that. And I'm going to use something like laptop and change the price to 1000 and say that we have three of those. Now, just a quick side note, when you will hear me say methods, then I basically mean to functions that are inside the classes. Because in terms of Python or in any programming language, when you have isolated definitions with this keyword, then those are considered to be called functions. But when you go ahead and create those functions inside classes, then those are called methods. So that is an important point that you should understand because I'm going to call those methods from now. Okay, so now if I was to continue by opening up and closing those parentheses, then you are going to see one parameter that is auto-generated that Python wants us to receive intentionally. Now, the reason that this happens, Python passes the object itself as a first argument when you go ahead and call those methods. Now, if I was to go here and say item one dot calculate total price, then the action that we are doing now is calling this method. But when you go ahead and call a method from an instance, then Python passes the object itself as a first argument every time. So that is why we are not allowed to create methods that will never receive parameters. Now you will see this if I was to remove the first parameter and say something like pass. Now, if I was to execute this program now, then you are going to see type error, calculate total price takes zero positional arguments, but one was given. So in simple words, what this exception says is that Python tries to pass one argument 
and you are not receiving any parameter. So that is very problematic. And that is why you always have to receive at least one parameter when you go ahead and create your methods. Now, since we always receive this parameter, then it is just a common approach to call this self. It was okay if I was to call it something like my param or I don't know, something else, but you never want to mess up with common conventions across different Python developers. So that is why just make sure that you leave it as self every time. Now, if I was to go ahead and run this program, then you're gonna see that we are not going to receive any errors. So this means that this method has been implemented correctly. Now let's see how we are going to benefit from creating this method because it should go ahead and create a calculation for us using price and quantity. So I will intentionally receive here two more parameters, which we could name just X and Y for now. And we could just say return X multiplied by Y. And now I will go ahead and pass in here two additional arguments and it will be item one dot price. The second one will be quantity. So that is going to work because when you call this method in the background, Python passes this as an argument and then it passes this second argument and then this has been passed as a third argument. So that is perfect. And if I was to run that and actually print this, so excuse me for running this before printing it. So I will surround this expression with this print built-in function and I will run that and you're gonna see 500 as expected. Now I could do the exact same thing for calculating the total price of our second item. So if I was to grab this and paste this in in this line and actually change this to item two and change this one to item two and as well as this one, then I would receive 3000 as expected and that is how you can create a method. All right, so we have learned about the basic concepts of object-oriented programming. Now, if you enjoyed in this video and you learned something new, please show your support by hitting the like button and as well as subscribing to my channel so you will not miss the future episodes. I will see you in the second episode.